Today's a super exciting day because I just received the brand new M2 iPad Pro 12.9 inch and the number of accessories to go with it. So I'm going to unbox everything, set it up and then I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm most curious to find out about the speed improvements of the new M2 chip and then of course also the new Apple Pencil hover feature. It looks super cool and I really can't wait to try it. And there's always the box that the iPad comes in looks amazing. I love the graphics but now let's see what's actually in the box. You can see I got the one terabyte version with Wi-Fi and cellular. It's always so nice when the iPad first turns on and greets you with a very, very friendly hello. So what I'm going to do now is set up this iPad by copying the settings from my previous iPad. And while it's doing that, I'm going to unbox the other accessories as well. Next up, we have the Apple Pencil. This is the second generation Apple Pencil, which you'll need for this iPad. I really love the Apple Pencil. It's my all time favorite Apple device. And yes, I know it's expensive and there are potentially other the stylus pens you could use but I very much recommend you stick to the Apple Pencil because it makes the iPad a thousand times more enjoyable. It has been designed to work perfectly with the iPad screen and it's also the only stylus that supports the new hover feature of the iPad. And then here we have the magic keyboard in white and it's such a gorgeous color. So let's pop the iPad on it and let's try it out. And one of the things I'm going to do with this iPad is use it as my main computer. So this will be the first time that I'm going to try exclusively using an iPad rather than a MacBook. I might use the iMac occasionally, but I really want to try and make this my main computer now. I very much like the feeling of the Magic Keyboard. It feels almost exactly the same as typing on my iMac keyboard. Really solid and smooth and I'll be able to type for a long time without getting tired. Now, with the keyboard attached to the iPad, you can use the trackpad to navigate. And you can see here there's this little cursor that moves around the iPad. So this is really comfortable and it doesn't take a long time to get used to it. Or alternatively, you can also attach a mouse to the iPad. It just connects via Bluetooth and then you can use the mouse if you don't want to use the trackpad. You might have already noticed that I've got an external screen here. And with the latest version of iPad OS 16, it's now possible to extend the iPad screen to an external monitor. And this is something I'm super excited about. So let's try it out. First, we will need to plug the iPad into the external monitor here. This is a really old external monitor that I've probably had for 10 years or so. So you don't need to go and get a special one if you already have one. And here it is, our expanded iPad screen. This is so exciting. Another new iPadOS 16 feature is Stage Manager, which means it is now possible to have different overlapping windows, almost like on the Mac. Let's open up Control Center and select it from here and this is the icon so let's turn this on now at first glance you don't notice anything but now let's bring up one of our apps and you can see now how it gets placed on stage with some other apps waiting here on the side you can have up to four apps here on stage and another four on the external monitor now let's see what happens when we move one of our apps to the external screen i really like using the luma fusion app to edit my videos but the screen is a bit small and it will be so nice to use the bigger screen. So now we can grab the top part of the app and then drag it over here and this is so nice. I can now make this much bigger and so now this almost looks like a real Mac app and you can see now I'm editing this same video all on my iPad with the external screen. This feature is currently available on both the M1 and the M2 iPad Pros. And now if I wanted to switch some of the apps for example using Excel you can see now how nice this is. We have the whole Excel sheet and you can use the keyboard and the mouse to navigate around the cells. So now you can use Excel almost like you're using it on your Mac. And then of course, my beloved Senior app here. I love using this app so much and having a bigger window makes it much easier to work with as well. So now I can type my to-do list here and it's really, really super handy to have this. And I'm extremely excited about this. 
And almost like on my Mac, you can resize the windows, you can bring other windows onto the stage. And then of course, you can have other windows open on the iPad screen itself as well. And so now I'm super looking forward to using this new iPad and then see how often I will have to use my iMac going forward. And now it's time to look at the brand new Apple Pencil hover feature. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to take the iPad out of the keyboard and put it into an Apple Smart Folio case. I usually like swapping them out, especially when I'm using the iPad with my Apple Pencil. This case is really, really nice. It's got this nice soft interior and it protects the iPad really well. Another little accessory I really like using is a sleeve for the Apple Pencil. It just makes it ever so slightly thicker and gives it a little bit more grip. This is an AHA style pencil sleeve that I got from Amazon. It's really nice. It doesn't interfere with the charging mechanism of the Apple Pencil and it's still magnetic. So it still sticks to the iPad and it charges the Apple Pencil when you're not using it. But of course now the long awaited Apple Pencil hover feature. So the way it works is that if you bring up the Apple Pencil close to the screen, you can see a little mark here, almost like a preview of what you are about to draw. You will need to bring the Apple Pencil close to the screen and then it starts interacting with it. This is very similar of how the mouse hover works. This is the watercolor brush and this is also new in the notes app. And so now if you go close to the screen, you get to see a little preview of your watercolor brush. So now let's start painting some watercolor. This is actually really nice, but it gets better. Let's change the color. And now you get a preview of what the color is going to look like when you mix it on the screen. This is really nice. So you can see already what it's going to look like when you mix the colors. Now let's try yellow as well. So it comes in orange here. And so now if we start painting this, it paints the same color. So this is really, really cool. But then I want to show you another very useful application of this feature. I have recently started using Affinity Publisher on the iPad. And this again is in the theme of not having to use my iMac anymore. I'm usually using Adobe InDesign on my iMac, but I really want to see if I can use this app instead. So this is a brand new app that I haven't really used before. And there's a lot of little icons here. I don't really know what the functionality is hidden behind all of these, but now I can hover over the icons to see a little label pop up, which makes it so much easier to learn the app. And then of course, we also want to have a quick look at the Procreate app to see how the hover feature works here. And the same as in the Apple Notes app, it highlights the icons, but it's probably not super useful right now. It's nice to make sure that you're selecting the right color swatch, but other than that, I haven't seen too many uses. But I do know that Procreate is working on a new version and hopefully they'll introduce some really handy features that make use of the Apple Pencil hover feature. But one of the things I wanted to show you, just in case you have any problems with your brushes, one of the things I've noticed is that the brushes don't tend to behave all that nicely when you have the hover feature turned on. You can see here, it creates this little artifact at the end. You can also see this when you quickly flick your brush, how it has this little weird sort of piece here. It doesn't happen so much if you use the Apple Pencil quite slowly, but it's still noticeable. As soon as you take the Apple Pencil off the screen too fast, it creates this little artifact here and it's not very nice. If this happens to you, then I recommend you turn off the Apple Pencil hover feature. It's not really a benefit right now using it in Procreate. So I'm actually going to turn this off. And the way to do that is to go into your settings menu. And then here under Apple Pencil, you can see here where it says Pencil Hover. You can turn this off and then go back into Procreate. And now this doesn't happen anymore. But I really hope that the Procreate team is going to fix this in an upcoming version. And then hopefully they'll also introduce some more interesting uses for this new feature. All right, and here you have it. This was my first impression of the brand new iPad Pro. I really, really love this iPad. It's definitely much faster than the previous one. This is an upgrade to me and I'm going to continue using it as my main computer going forward. I'm definitely going to make more videos documenting my experience using the iPad as my main computer. So make sure that you subscribe so you're not missing any of these updates if you're interested in hearing about it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.